Tokyo, my friends. This is Daisuke, and I hope all of you are having a really nice day today. I wanted to just touch base with you because I feel like I haven't spoken with you in, a, in some time, so I wanted to just stop by and just see how you were doing. And just to let you know what I've been doing over the, the past uh, several days or so, it's now uh, cherry blossom season, at least in Tokyo, or at least it's, it's coming, so the cherry blossoms are about to become in bloom. And it's almost April, so there are many changes that are scheduled to emerge uh, in Japan, not just in terms of uh, society and life, but also this change of season. So everything is is uh, is undergoing a, a sense of change. I think, or it's on the cusp, as it were, of that feeling. And I am winding down my uh, video uh, uh, projects. Uh, not winding down, but I'm uh, now putting the finishing touches on my approach to the next films of Edward Yang. So uh, I will be talking about this film uh, very soon, which is A Confucian Confusion, which is, this is the Japanese DVD of this. Uh, and then after that, I will be talking about this, which is the Japanese DVD of the film Couples, which is also known by its title Mahjong. So these are two Japanese DVDs uh, that are, I think, currently out of print, and they're not so easy to get now. Um, that's the problem with these two films by Edward Yang, is that I think it's very difficult to get these uh, through official distribution channels, and so it's a little bit uh, difficult for me. Uh, the reason why I've been taking so much time is because I've been trying to figure out in my head how I can best approach these films because I have a feeling that, at least for the time being, these films are probably not going to be uh, as um, as attain easily attainable as other films by Edward Yang that I've spoken about, in particular Brighter Summer Day or the one I'm going to be talking about after these, which is E. So I'm just trying to figure out exactly what level I should strike in my discussion of these two films, because I don't want to go into too much detail if only a, a few people uh, are able to access it. So, uh, But at the same time, I think I do want to talk about these films in detail. Uh, because I think it's uh, it's very important and also it, it helps to form a kind of connection between what we have discussed in the Edward Yang film uh, discussion in the past. So I'm still struggling, to be perfectly honest, as to how to approach these two films. But uh, just give me a few more uh, days on that and I will hopefully be able to strike a balance in my head. Other things that I've been uh, going through, uh, I one of the reasons why I haven't been making any videos is because I've been, uh, to be perfectly honest, I've been engrossed in a a book that I uh, was able to acquire uh, some time back, and I was reading it, and I was just so captivated by it that I just was reading it and uh, uh, when I finished I just couldn't believe what I read because it was so it was such an amazing book and uh, I read it again and uh, it's it's very dense and it's quite it's an academic book it's uh, very erudite and very packed with information so I can't claim to have gotten every single point but um, this is I think uh, one of the, well, I don't think, no, I think this is the best book on Japanese cinema that I have had the pleasure of reading in English. And so I wanted to share it with you just very quickly. It's called The Cinema of Actuality. The Cinema of Actuality. And the author's name is Yuriko Furuhata. Now I'm just going to put it up close there so you can hear. There you go. Yuriko Furuhata. Uh, the Cinema of Actuality. So the subtitle is Japanese Avant-Garde Filmmaking in the Season of Image Politics. This is from 2013. Yuriko Furuhata is a professor at uh, McGill University. 
and so and a professor in the Department of East Asian Studies and the World Cinema Program at McGill. So she's a professor and she wrote uh, this book on the cinema of actuality which focuses on uh, primarily the cinema of the 1960s and 1970s Japan which is incidentally the period of Japanese cinema that I'm currently uh, so uh, captivated by at the moment and this book is quite simply the best book I have read uh, on this period uh, of Japanese cinema in English this is simply uh, a, a fantastic book. It's not so long, as you can see. It's only about um, about 250, 260 pages or so, including the index. And so it's not so, um, it's not so uh, super dense. And as you can see, the text is not so small. And so this is, I think, a very uh, uh, a, a very, uh, it's, it's not such an overwhelmingly uh, intimidating work to read. However, it is very academic and it is packed with a lot of um, uh, sort of um, uh, it's very precise in its writing, and so perhaps it might seem a little bit impenetrable. But I would urge you, if you're interested, to take a look at this and to read it and to uh, go over it very slowly and very carefully, because the uh, the the discussions in this book are uh, really uh, just so I think on target. Uh, there are so many great points mentioned here. And what I love about it in particular is oh, there are a couple things that I love. Uh, the, uh, the, the Professor Furuhata uh, basically argues that, first of all, the, this movement of films during this period uh, by certain filmmakers um, such as Oshima and uh, Wakamatsu and uh, Yoshida and um, uh, others, another like Masao Arachi and others, uh, th there was a, a kind of uh, intertwining or in, uh, of, of a uh, between uh, the emerging cinema of this time and also the uh, uh, the, the the use of uh, uh, image and media and the cross section of that with politics and the emerging left or the right as it, as the case may be, and so this kind of uh, spectacle. Uh, uh, politics, or what she terms image politics, comes into play, and it, it becomes important because cinema seems to be enveloped in this kind of struggle, or this kind of expression of, of a political agenda, or ideas, or a debate uh, in the context of a film or cinema. And so this is, I think, such a key discussion to be making, uh, very key. And so uh, this book, uh, I think does something very, very interesting, which is uh, usually in uh, Japanese books on, or I'm sorry, on English books on Japanese cinema, the tendency is to focus entirely on the context of, of Japanese cinema uh, and the history of Japanese cinema and just focus on that context. And look at it in the in the context of the growth of Japanese cinema within itself, which is, I think, a perfectly fine approach. And I think it, 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 it forms a, a very uh, easily, easy to digest narrative, so to speak, uh, a narrative through line as to the development of Japanese cinema from the so-called classical period to the more um, avant-garde or counter-cultural period, so to speak, uh, and then through to the, to the modern period and then the recent period. So, uh, but I, I think the point that Professor Furuhata is making is that it's not so hermetically sealed. In other words, Japanese cinema doesn't exist in a bubble, she argues, but rather it, it, it exists in the context of this landscape that we call the turbulent 60s of Japanese history. And when you think about that and the emerging influence of television and media and uh, uh, the way that media is used, in particular television, is used in the context of a political debate uh, and the idea of image is king or the idea of, of image equals uh, propaganda, then uh, I think one realizes that cinema is not just 
within itself uh, a development of, of uh, you know, things of Japanese cinema that came before. And I think it, it becomes a much more complicated picture. And so therefore, uh, Professor Furuhata focuses on this uh, as part of her um, uh, hypothesis, if you will. And I think it's a well-argued hypothesis and it's quite compelling and uh, for my money it's I think the best uh, book on Japanese cinema that I've come across in English it's truly uh, an amazing work and so I was so engrossed by this uh, by this writing and I just had to read it over again because there are so many things that I couldn't get and so many references I couldn't get. So I just had to read them over and just try to get as much as I could. And uh, even now I, I'm unable to completely uh, absorb or fathom uh, the, the scope of her arguments. But uh, uh, I am just truly blown away by this book, Cinema of Actuality, by Professor Yuriko Furuhata of McGill University. This is from 2013 at Duke University Press. So again, this is, I think, the best book in English that I have come across with respect to Japanese cinema, and in particular, the cinema of the 60s and 70s. Uh, there are other books in English uh, about uh, this period, and uh, it's, it's a very interesting take. But I think for my money, uh, the, the things that I tended to have uh, feelings about or uh, things that I were... I, I tended to think about but was never quite able to articulate fully. She does so in such a clear and concise and well-reasoned way, much more than I could ever hope to be able to do so. Um, and when I read her work, I was able to say, ah, yes, this is exactly what I was, what I was trying to think, but I was unable to express. But here it is, in a, in a sense, uh, the, the kinds of feelings that I too share about Japanese cinema and uh, this particular period, but I was unable to articulate or unable to express in a, in a, in a well thought out way. Well, here we go. We have a book that uh, does it in such a, m a much better way. And I think for my money, uh, this is the best book. And uh, the, the thing about it is that I think for uh, it, it's possible that reading this book might be a little bit of a um, of a it, it might not necessarily be a full fully enriching experience for those of you outside of Japan and that's because many of the films that are discussed in this book from the 1960s and the 1970s are I don't know if they're as uh, accessible outside of Japan as they are inside of Japan. So therefore, the discussion might be a little bit, uh, un to a certain degree, unfulfilling because one might not be able to have seen the films prior to reading what Professor Furuhata has to say about them, which is a shame. But if you can uh, get some of these films, uh, even to a limited extent, you know, the films of uh, Oshima or Wakamatsu, then I would suggest you do so. Um, also, th it requires a certain knowledge of, of general Japanese history at this time. I think you can... Uh, the, the internet is, is wonderful for this, I think. So you can uh, hopefully get a, a general... Uh, you don't have to be an expert in Japanese history, but uh, just to get a general sense of the, the history of, of this period. Um, uh, one particular event that's discussed here is the is the uh, incident that uh, occurred with respect to the author uh, Yukio Mishima in 1970, November 1970. And so uh, that might be a, a historical event that is, I think, in and of itself, um, not without uh, its own particular uh, significance in the context of, uh, of the, the political history at the time. So, uh, uh, yes, so uh, this is to say that this book was a real... Uh, mind-blowing experience and I think it's it it in many ways it potentially has a, a kind of paradigm shift of uh, potential because I don't know if any other I mean I could be wrong but I don't know of any other uh, books in English that uh, focus on this period the way that Professor Furuhata does and I 
I'm so glad that this book exists because uh, this is the exact kind of thing that I think is has been um, uh, it's it's been hard to get uh, at least in English and so it's it's wonderful to see it expressed as eloquently as it is by Professor Furuhata in her book Cinema of Actuality. So I would strongly recommend that you you get this if you can and. Uh, again, uh, if I, um, well, actually, let me take that back. I think the th- those of you who already have a sense of Japanese cinema history will probably find this very interesting. So uh, I, I wouldn't buy this cold. In other words, if you know nothing about Japanese cinema, probably this is not the best place to start because there are certain uh, there are certain. Uh, uh, things that one I think needs to have one, under one's belt, uh, just a general sense of Japanese history. So I, I guess maybe if you're looking for a, a general sort of treatise, if you will, on Japanese film in English, um, I guess I could recommend this book, which is uh, Hundred Years of Japanese Film by uh, Donald Ritchie. And this is this is sort of an overview of Japanese film, and from the silent era all the way up to a certain uh, part of the modern period. So, and everything in between, more or less. Uh, there are certain gaps, and I would say that the the period of, of Japanese cinema that's discussed by Professor Furuhata is indeed one of those gaps. So this Donald Ritchie doesn't quite cover this period as well as Furuhata does. I would. Uh, I would uh, assert, but all the same, as a kind of an overview, um, a kind of digest look at uh, Japanese film, I think this is the, the place to start, and this is a really uh, lovely uh, introduction into Japanese film, in my opinion, and uh, it's, uh, I think, essential um, for those who want to get a taste of, of what Japanese film is all about, and in particular, Donald Ritchie. Uh, you know, Donald Ritchie is uh, not an an insignificant figure. He's quite significant in the context of of uh, of Japanese uh, of of uh, Japanese cinema, and in particular, opening up <laughs> the Japanese cinema uh, to those of outside of Japan. In particular, his work on Ozu and Kurosawa, and and uh, so he is uh, quite simply, I think, uh, the place. I think every person who studies Japanese cinema uh, will know the name of Donald Ritchie, and he is that famous. And he is his book on Kurosawa. I think is is as uh, is as uh, well known as say the the Truffaut book on Hitchcock. And it's one of those books. It's one of those things that I think people, I think everyone has owned <laughs> or everyone has read once. In in uh, anyone who's uh, been a, a student of, of cinema. Uh, studies or, or or something like that, or Kurosawa will know the name of Donald Ritchie, and rightly so because he has a, a very well spoken tone. Uh, he has a good way of writing that's very understandable and lucid. So, uh, if you're looking for something as an introduction, uh, I would suggest this one: Hundred Years of of Japanese Film uh, by Donald Ritchie. Um, incidentally, Donald Ritchie was also a filmmaker, and so he left behind um, a number of works uh, that I think are very interesting and some of those are actually included in this DVD. This is a Japanese DVD called a Donald Ritchie Film Anthology. So this is a collection of some of his short works that he did and he has a very, how shall I put it, an interesting almost experimental eye and so uh, he was not only a scholar of film history and uh, the, the progress of Japanese cinema and the Japanese history during the, um, during the 20th century. He was also a filmmaker and an interesting one at that. So I'm not sure as to the availability of this outside of Japan. In fact, inside of Japan, it's quite, uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it's not OOP. Well, it could be OOP actually, because it was very, um, it wasn't the easiest disc to get. But in any event, that is the Donald Ritchie Film Anthology DVD. And it has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six short films by him. And they're set in Japan. 
And so the, it has an interesting uh, look or uh, approach to Japan and situations in Japan that I, I think has is, is very unique and uh, uh, quite uh, quite subtle and uh, nuanced in many places. But anyway, there is the the disc inside with no booklet. Um, anyway, so that's Donald Ritchie. Um, and uh, in case you're interested, there's his disc of films. But also here is his one would say primer of Japanese film. And so if you're interested in an introduction. Uh, please consider Donald Ritchie's book, 100 Years of Japanese Film. And then once you have a, uh, once you have a firm grasp as to the scope of Japanese cinema, and then if you're interested in the period of the 60s and 70s, which I am currently just, um, just basically just eating up, I'm just going through everything. I'm, I've been so engrossed with this. Um, uh, my mind has been almost preoccupied with it. It's been amazing. But in case you're interested in this period, please go visit the work by Furuhata, Cinema of Actuality, because it is truly, a, as I said, a potential paradigm shift. So uh, if you're interested in this, uh, and this is, again, this is exactly what um, uh, the, the kind of thing that I'm, I was looking for in English uh, with respect to a discussion of this period and it really hits the it just it's so perfect in what it's trying to uh, argue and assert uh, that I think it's invaluable absolutely invaluable and it's helped to shape my own views on uh, Japanese cinema in particular this period the 60s and 70s in a way that I think I I think I, I've, I'm forever changed because um, I think her her arguments and her outlook on cinema are uh, quite bold and uh, so uh, just so right they're they so they're so right in other words his, it's not cinema is not it, it doesn't exist in and of itself everything exists within the space that we call the human experience and uh, the, the progress of history it's not just cinema, but things happen in life, and cinema is, is is part of that, or it's used in that movement, or it's 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 used in the struggle, or it's 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 used as propaganda. But that's not the end of the story. It's it, it's it's therefore this mode of expressiveness or expression, and if you have that in the context of 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 nineteen uh, sixties uh, Japan. What did it mean to be Japanese during this period, and how did one express oneself, and what was one expressing at the time? All these considerations come into play, and then when you think about it, you realize, therefore, that cinema is not just in and of itself a thing, but it is a living, breathing part of the Japanese experience. And that's exactly what she's getting at, which is why this is such a key work. Anyway, I'm sorry I'm, I'm just uh, going on about this, but it's just I'm so uh, in awe of Professor Furuhata and her work right now that uh, I just can't uh, recommend this strongly enough. Anyway, my friends, I'm sorry about that. So um, anyway, uh, that's it. So uh, I hope you're doing well. And again, I apologize for not being uh, faster with my work here. And also, I haven't forgotten about the Criterion Collection release of, the, of uh, Sid and Nancy. So that's coming very soon. So uh, please be patient about that. I, again, I apologize for my slow, uh, slow progress. But uh, again, uh, there are only so many hours in the day. So uh, please, I, I just beg, uh, your, uh, I ask for your patience. And I really apologize for my uh, unforgivable slowness so, uh, but if you can forgive me then I hope to see you again uh, in the next video in the meantime my friends please be happy and healthy and well and please as always please keep watching a lot of great 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 movies if you have any recommendations or suggestions for films to watch I'm all ears I always am all ears so uh, thank you very much and please be well cheers